gon' step up for me Make sure my fans stay cause my daughter gotta eat I know I ain't perfect Welcome back everybody and thank you for coming to my YouTube channel That is Deb Chanel's 48th World In case you missed it in my intro And if you like the beat that you heard And the uh, little rapping going on That's my nephew We call him Zay on his YouTube station, he's called Zay Escobar. All right, so check him out. Go Google him up, and you will get a lot of entertainment news as well as sports news. So if you're interested in all of that, go check out his channel. All right, but it's time to speak your mind. We're going to be talking about the ladies of Real, well, I'm sorry, not the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but these women here, Merit to Medicine. Yes, we're going to be discussing Merit to Medicine episode that aired tonight which is October 27th at 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, we are going to get on them, and their season is Season 7, Episode 8. The uh, title of this particular episode was called Food for Thought. Just to give you a brief synopsis or summary of what's going to happen in this episode, we go like, <laughs> we take it like this. Jackie butts heads with Curtis over the rising costs of their renovations. Contessa gives her father a new smile, courtesy of Dr. Heavenly. Simone and Cecil gives Miles a wake-up call about his future. And Quad celebrates her birthday and her new cookbook. Again, this was Married to Medicine, season 7, episode 8. And the title was Food for Thought. And my summary at addition was... Um, just to give you a brief synopsis of everything that happened and transpired also throughout this particular episode, the biggest part was Quad's book signing slash birthday party. I didn't really see too much to towards the end when uh, Quad got or she surprised her own self with a $92,000 automobile. And I'm like, Quad, 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 are you not planning on having a family one day? Uh, honey, you driving around in a house, okay? <laughs> and in Atlanta, a ninety-two thousand dollar home is it's it's pretty decent for one there. I mean, for a one person dwelling, and uh, depending on if she bought the land, it could be a nice house set up for her. Since she just had the puppies in herself, and it don't look like she's uh gonna waste any time slowing down. Uh, she's putting her career first. She's trying to make her money, both on Sister Circle as well as Merit to Medicine. So, yes, law, she is striking the pitchfork hard, all right? She's down and out in them streets trying to make her a living or way of life, trying to make that ends meet, okay? Then we got Simone's son. He's, his name is Miles. He's um, Her and Cecil are pretty much trying to groom him. For college, you know, making him accessible to learning more so he can get out their house and do well by himself. Okay. He transferred or had to come home from Howard University because I guess he had too much of that uh freshman uh what do you call it? Episodes where they go they leave high school, go to college, get caught up in all the hoopla of the parties and you know, just the freedom that they didn't have when they were under their mother's and father's roof. You know, he had a little taste of it. He just went, wow. And I'm sure his grades failed. And that's why they had to bring him out of Howard University and back home. And he attended Georgia State University, which is not a bad uh, academic, educational, um, we call it, environment for him to be in. A lot of people graduate from Georgia State University and go and do good, you know, well within their career and do very uh good about providing for themselves so i don't know why she was kind of somewhat snubbing georgia state like it's okay but it, I, I want it better from you i want you to be at harvard or uh howard university which is a good uh a, a good hbc college uh but you, you didn't take advantage of it and now homeboy talking about he want to go to berkeley <laughs> He want to go out in California and spend some more of their hard-earned working money, especially the mother, okay? So she's pretty much saying, you know, I, I'm not sure about that. So that was a big scene uh, that they were trying to instill in him values, morals, and a good education and how it could take you so far so you can live in a big house, so you can drive a nice expensive car, da-da-dee, da-da-da. Okay, then you got Jackie, big whole scene about 
she's wanting to renovate this house and god dog it, it was three hundred thousand dollars okay that's a, a brand new house for some folks that's a a brand new medium-sized mansion but of course she wanted to really gut everything at this house i don't know if they got it for a steal or whatever but she's already in a house that was previously previously owned by someone else but she's trying to draft up her own manuscript and outline of uh architectural work on how she wants her house to be built I'm like girl you should have went on about some land uh somewhere and put you a you know maybe a five acre land put you a house on top of it that you build from the ground up and just call it a day okay but you know curtis has some things to say about that until she gives him an eye-opening experience that he cannot even combat with a comeback of an argument or a discussion forward then you got qua she's paying homage to herself her sister circle, and then her sisters uh, that she's been with, rocking with from day one, which was on Married to Medicine. And that carries a lot of fuel for the negative because she's shouting her sister circle out before she's shouting, you know, basically her teammates out that she's been rolling with uh, for at least four or five years now. Maybe a little less, okay? But that's the scenes I wanted to add on to the summary of what actually went down in this particular episode but we're gonna go to quad first all right quad is pretty much having her uh eyes and, and and ears set on having a fantastic type of launch of her book signing um cookbook that she's promoted out there uh in the public and it seems to be doing real well and uh she had a book signing at Barnes and Nobles, but taking it back to her, her checking on her event that she's putting out uh, a book signing party launch as well as uh, her birthday party. She combined them all in one. And, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, I didn't really see you too much celebrating your birthday other than you doing a little networking about your book signing. But I guess when you're making money, it just don't matter. You're going to be happy either way. But um, she invites everybody in their little circus, except for uh, Mariah, and she's cool with it. She's like, you know, I could see her and I could be cordial when I have to film with you all in certain scenes. But my scene that I have to uh, put together and provide an audience to view it and whatnot, it's going to be absent of Mariah. Okay. <laughs> That was fun. Then, you know, like I said, she had a book signing at Barnes and Noble. So it was a cute little scene. Uh, it didn't seem like there were too many people in there at the time when they first start uh, rolling the film. But as it got, you know, I guess later on in the day, they edited it and it showed her having, you know, a pretty good, nice piece of people. Excuse me, out there to support her in her new venture of her cookbook. And of course, Dr. Heavenly came because that's her ace boo coon, and Contessa came with Dr. Heavenly. Maybe they showed up in two different cars, but they walked in the door together. Okay. And Dr. Heavenly just started shading it once, like, I got things to do. I ain't got time to stand in this line. Her and Contessa both were like, Oh, this is too long. We need to be up front in her line. She need to. Need uh, we got places to go and people to see and we got time to be standing in this line so they both were just piss ass poor when it came to being patient and knowing that you know Quad had to file an order or receiving her guests you know and, and if they had to stand in line because they got there not a little bit maybe 30 to 30 minutes to an hour earlier than when it was supposed to open up for her book signing they would have been the first in line but then you know it, it just all depends on how many people follow Quad and, you know, they want to be the first one to grab her first edition of her cookbook or whatnot. Who knows? But they were just making all kind of negative banner while they waited in line and filming was being produced. You know what I'm saying? So um, that was pretty much it of Quad and her mess other than at the end, Quad, uh, you know, had a very lavish type of um, birthday slash cookbook reception party for the people uh, of the who's who's in her circle crowd or whatever, who she feel like she want to invite and celebrate with. Uh, she had people swinging in different, well, you know, like, um, what do you call it? Uh, what was her name? Um, Dr. Simone, she called it when she walked into Quad's event. Ooh, this is a circus. <laughs> and pretty much she was right on point with that. But it was a nice upscale type of circus uh, environment she was trying to 
uh, motif herself out and, and show that she can throw an elaborate, strange, but elegant party, okay? So uh, she had the, a woman dressed up like a butterfly, and she was all lit up and stuff, which, you know, was I'm like, what? What is this? A costume party, a Halloween party? I, what gives? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that was a hot mess, but it was okay. Uh, choosing, you know, that part, this is what she wanted. This is what she wanted to give to the public and her constituents and stuff and her friends. This is how she thought her party is elaborate. over the top. It's her, okay? And then so uh, she goes in towards the end of her event. She goes in and thanks Sister Circle, which is the, uh, what do you call it? I think it's a talk show she's on here in Atlanta called Sister Circle. And she pretty much gave them the kudos for being uh, there having her back through all her rough times, her bad times, you know, teaching her what real friendship was, what real women do for each other, you know, uplift them, this, that, and the third. And she was just giving Selena, and uh, I think her name is Rashi, Rashawn, or something like that. But like I said, they over there. She, I didn't see um, Tracy Braxton, which she's, was it Tracy? No, I'm sorry, Trina Braxton. That's a part of Sister Circle. She wasn't there, but she's on Sister Circle. So it was just Selena and, uh, like I said, Rashawn or Ross, somebody. Uh, and, you know, she was singing their praises and this, that, and third, that, you know, they were very good to her, especially when she was having a good time. And so, Claude, not Claude, but um, what's her name? Uh, Dr. Contessa, everybody who had eyes to hear on their team that came besides Mariah, they kind of got offended about it because they said, oh, so what were we, mush, hash, you know, what what were we, dog shit, we weren't there for you, we weren't around for you when you were going through all this difficulty with your husband, now your divorced husband, oh, okay, so uh, Eugene and Toya and Dr. Simone wasn't here for it, they bounced out, okay, and that was pretty much the life of Quad on this particular episode, then we go to uh, Buffy because we really don't have anything to say to her. I must say, I don't understand why she's here on the show because they don't give us anything. Her husband is a psychiatrist. He uh, escorted her to the party, uh, book launching, signing event that Quad was hosting. He came with his wife, Buffy. He seems like a, a, a fish out of water still. He wasn't giving me anything but nice. That's it. Being uh, humbled. Uh, and, and just being an all-around cool cat that's quiet and, you know, you just sit up there like a fixture on the wall or something. You got to go and speak to him and have a little banter. And then it's, it's okay, are you too bored for me? I got to go <laughs> type of issue. So, um, and then, um, let me see. That's pretty much it with Buffy. She didn't really have too much to give or say. And they didn't too much pay attention to her as far as the filming. So, moving off of her, we'll go to Dr. Simone's. Dr. Simone thing was she had to shade Quad when she finally got to the uh, meet and greet slash birthday party with Dr. Jackie. Uh, she pretty much was like, oh, I, can, I see this is just like a carnival show. But this is Quad. Yes, yeah, fabulous, fantastic, and strange. Pretty much what she wanted to say. Not in those exact words. Um, and that was pretty much it uh, with her as far as her uh, talking to Cecil about their son Miles and how he's not being proactive and making everything cool and refresh for um what do you call it college level thinking you know she, they got him home from Howard because he wasn't making the grades he and he wasn't being responsible he didn't have that get and go uh attitude you know uh, kind of like more of an extrovert than an invert type of behavior, demeanor from him. They wanted him to, you know, be self-sufficient and, and be proactive about his life and what he wants for it and go out there and get it. You know, show some little gusto about himself. But he was like, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, but I know I want to go to California. I want to go to Berkeley. I, I want to get the hell out of Georgia, okay? I don't want y'all to buy me no more. If that means I'm going to straighten up and fly right wash my clothes accordingly, keep myself orderly, give me a good study habit going on, then I do that because I, 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 I'm going to leave. I can't stay with y'all anymore. So they were basically talking about their son, what they were going to do. They went up to his room having a discussion with him. And of course, Dr. Simone treating him like a five-year-old, like, you don't even wash your clothes. You don't even have a good studying habit. Uh, 
situation going on. We have to wake you up. You still want to be like tucked away in the bed. It's like you're in high school or elementary. We're treating you like, and she don't really think he's taking life in general and uh, his academic studies well. She don't think he's really taking them serious at all. So, you know, Cecil, not Cecil, but Curtis, he was at, no, I'm sorry, it was Cecil. He was acting like, okay, she's been a little hard on you. I understand you're a man. It's going to take us a little while to get you to understand that we're not going to be here the rest of our life. You can't live with us for the rest of your life. And you need to be proactive about getting your ass up, going to school, getting you a, probably a part-time job for what he wanted to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. He probably need a part-time job too. And, you know, study, study, study. And he'll have some loose change in his pocket while he ain't studying, okay? But that's just my pun intended. Uh, and that's pretty much uh, it far as, you know, other than Dr. Simone making a reference that Cecil didn't need to go play golf with his friends, but she want to go with her friends and take trips away from home and him. And that's fine. See, I I, I don't understand Dr. Simone. We're going to move on from her, okay? Because I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be positive. But we go to Dr. Jackie. Jackie is... Uh, She's an eloquent, eloquently spoken woman. She knows how to put her words to cut you like, you know, like she don't took your heart out of the chest and, and everything, especially when she was talking about substituting not having a baby and family with Curtis of that nat, nat, <coughs> that multitude or naturality. Uh, so she's going to put all her emotions and her baby, her new rented house or renovated house is going to be her new baby. I'm like, you know, you can't make objects and material things your baby. You need more counseling to understand that this is just a house. That's, you know, whatever you do in it, that's where the love comes from. This is just concrete, uh, wood, uh, or sheetrock. You know, it, it, it has nothing of no value of it. But she's basically telling Curtis that, yeah, you are going to pay for these uh, revisions that I want my house to be because you didn't give me what I wanted which was a family with you, a child, children, the whole motherhood thing. You took that away from me. And she was half blaming him and half blaming cancer. So um, the cancer scare she had and where she had to have a you know, double mistake, uh, mistake of me. And, you know, she feel less than a woman like, like that as well by not having her breast, but she's dealt with it. But just not having children, you, st you still see it plays a very deep, hurted, seated root of pain for her. It's not going to go away unless she has the opportunity to adopt the child or, you know, do something with her ex, which I don't know if it's plausible at this time or not. But, you know, they showed a back screen or shots uh, when, or uh, I should say slides, back in the day when her and Curtis was talking about bringing children into their life. And he was like, mm, I don't want that life. I had children. I have a child. And I don't need no more. That's not the lifestyle I'm trying to have for myself. I want to be free. I want to do what I want to do. I want to enjoy life. I want to enjoy life with you, which don't include any kids. I'm sorry, whatever. So he went into a perception of a meeting about, re you know, rearranging their house or reinvading, uh, renovating their home. He wanted to watch the dollars, the purse, the wallet, and all that kind of stuff. And Dr. Jack was like, uh-uh. And when she threw that whole thing about, you didn't let me have no church, so this is my child. He kind of took a second note and said, thank you for being honest and open about your feelings. And I agree. I concur. And yes, you can have your $300,000 renovate, renovating fee charge. Okay. I'm like, okay, Carter, you stood up for that. Because she, I mean, she had me in your tears when she said that shit. I'm like, damn. And I started looking at you like I want to claw your eyes out too. Like, why you can't get that girl or uh, that lady or baby? What's wrong with you, man? You can sling it, lay it low, and spread it wide with other people, other women. You know, I don't know if you were married before or, you know, you had a baby out of red lock or whatever. What it is, what it is. You still have a child. She has that, uh, she has no claim to fame on that subject, except for being a stepmom. And stepmoms don't really get it, especially if you're longing to have your own child from your own body. That experience she's missed, and she's going to always miss it. And to Cur Curtis, make it right. You know, and this is, have got the child. You know what I'm saying? Get that girl what she want. I think before this uh, show ends in its entirety, she may end up getting a baby. Who knows? Curtis might say, okay, fine. We'll have it. I guess I'll be 90 years old to 100, you know, going to a baseball, basketball game. But okay. But then again, she may not get it. Uh, it just is what it is. But I don't think she's going to get it with Curtis because he's just too steadfast, hard, and shut down on that idea. Uh, and 
that was pretty much it. She didn't shade too much of going to Quad's event, uh, per se. We're going to move on to, uh, what's her name? Toya. Toya still, um, you know, shading people in her confessionals. And, you know, she's upset because she has to attend a party with her best friend, her booski. Um, Mariah didn't get invited to. She's over talking it with, um, uh, Eugene, her husband, where he seems to be her confidant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Her ace boon coon when she ain't with the ladies trying to cut up. And she's telling him how she feels. She feels kind of bad about going, you know, trying to support somebody that don't like her, her best friend. But she's still trying to actually uh, support somebody that has definitely hit a milestone in their career as well as their life. And she want to celebrate it because Quad would be there for her in that essence unless she was doing something you know, major that kept her away. So she kind of felt torn between the two. But she went on and um, supported Quad's event as well as her slash birthday party, got her drink on, got her eats on. And, you know, Eugene was in tow with her. But he had gave her some solid advice about, you know, it's all about support, you know, your friends when they have these nice endeavors and they invite you. Hey, we just play nice, go in. You know, don't even talk about Mariah or whatnot. And just have a, their evening to themselves with us there to celebrate for them, with them. So, he was cool about that. And I didn't know, uh, I'm like, Toy, did you cop out Dr. Heaven? And she got a three-story type uh, dressing room or closet. And then you got a two-story closet. Okay, girl, I see you. You couldn't afford what Dr. Heaven was giving, but you got some of it, didn't you? And, you know, it was very nice. Both of the closets are very nice, Dr. Heaven as well as uh, Toya. And, of course, um, Toya and um, Dr. Heavenly getting a little shade match because Dr. Heavenly is pretty much asking the group, where is Contessa? Why she not here? And Toya blurted out, well, where Mariah? She ain't here either. And, of course, Dr. Heavenly got her wicked laugh on, which is very wicked and strange. I can't stand that, la that laugh she gives. But it's okay. It's her. I'll try to embody it and, and like it as I have to keep watching each scene. Uh, that she's in, but Dr. Helen pretty much shed it down, like, girl, we finna go through this, it's, we at a party event, and we celebrate my best booskies thing, and we ain't finna, we ain't finna go through this, we ain't gonna go through it, uh, Toya, okay, so Toya fell back, Dr. Helen fell back, and, um, that was pretty much on the scene with Toya, when it came to Dr. Helen, you know she was on her throne, throwing shade left, right, and, 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 and in the middle, neutral, round the world, and whatever. She was throwing shade at everybody, even her best booski, Quad. She was saying Quad that been through too much, child. She, she done lost her man. Uh, <laughs> she uh, launched a, what do you call it, a, a perfect pup type uh, clothing line for dolls. That was an epic failure. Her marriage was an epic failure. And, you know, she was just this dog and quad out. I'm like, damn, quad, I hope you get a chance to see this footage on Dr. Jackie. I mean, Dr. Uh, Helen shading the hell out you and saying you can't keep a man. You can't keep no money. Uh, <laughs> you had a rough time uh, with these business ventures that went south. But, damn, okay, you could cook. I don't like to cook, but I'm going to come support you by your book so you get, keep getting your coin or your dollars, okay? So, that was pretty much uh, Dr. Heavenly thing. And then she had a scene where Dr. Contessa had um, brought her dad in. I'm sure it was several more visits that they edited out that they didn't tape. Because you ain't going right in and Dr. Heavenly have a bridge already made up that's going to fix your mouth. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute. Before that, uh, they were showing Contessa's dad uh, had a five carat. Eight grams of gold, uh, what do you call it? Tea fixture, a grill is what they call it. I'm like, wait a minute now. He need to go on and sell that grill, break that shit down, and put it in the bank account or give it to his grandchildren because that's a hot mess. I like that old ass man sitting up there talking about he wearing a grill. I like, uh uh. But, you know, Dr. Heavenly did very well with, you know, reconstructing his teeth, you know, with the bridge and everything. It looked very nice. So I'm like, okay, but I bet it cost a pretty penny. I don't know if it was just freebie. She did or did Contessa actually pay her full price for her services. We have yet to be, that have yet to be determined. Then we go to Contessa. Contessa still being resentful. 
you know, throwing up in her husband's face about he was just, you know, too weak of a man. He he could have, you know, let her finish her program and just stand third. You know, she just being, you know, real negative and, and, and very aggressive about, you know, having to have to throw shade at him to make him feel bad. And of course, he don't feel bad. He feel angry, angry towards you because you keep bringing up the stuff every episode um, that is shown between the two. And then you bring it up in front of the kids, which he expressed. We we ain't having this conversation about you quitting school and you having some resentment towards me and probably the children too because you can't finish your your occupational therapy type of uh program. I'm sorry, but you know he made it hard for her in, in true light, but still it was ultimate. Her, ultimately her decision to quit the school you know she could just say okay i see your shade i feel your shade it's a very big burden on me but i'm gonna still be going forward because i'm gonna get this uh license licensure under my belt and my family is gonna be fine okay you're gonna have to do what you gotta do and i'm gonna be you know skyping them and, and, and doing a little bit more that i can do on the go but we finna keep this uh program running this train running this plane flying towards this degree uh, or certification and that's should have been it you know what i'm saying but she just felt like she had to bring her daddy in it time out it was a scene where she was out with lunch out to lunch with her kids and her family her dad showed up and she was trying to pull him in the uh the loop to say well can you come watch my kids so i finish school he was like no hell i cannot <laughs> and um uh, her husband was kind of upset that she would bring it up in front of the kids, which was a no-no in his eyes. We ain't finna argue. We ain't gonna go back and forth with this subject. It's a dead subject. You said you quit because you want to blame it on me. That's fine, but that we have uh, beat that horse. It's dead. It put a fork in it. It's done, okay? Don't do not do that. But her dad pretty much said her straight like, no, you know, I'm coming to visit and I could stay, you know, for two weeks. Maybe if y'all want to go on a trip or whatnot. But no, I got a business to run myself. And no, I'm not going to take care of your children while you go to school and finish your, you know, educational endeavors. You're going to have to make it work between you and your husband. I'm not in it. And I'm like, cool, Papa, cool. Shut her shit down. Uh, let me see. Is there anybody else I needed to talk about? I think that was pretty much it. Oh, and I had to make a joke where uh, Toya did say some crazy ass shit. Uh, she was saying, don't, a woman should taste their vagina juices before their husband uh, taste their vagina juices or their boyfriend or whatnot. And daughter hell I ain't going around tasting my uh, my uh, vagina uh, discharge. Are you crazy? But I know what it tastes like. It probably tastes like coffee and mocha. And all. She, you know, she was just shading her own self and the other ones. And Dr. Simone, she just looked like she was just too appalled that that would even come out of Toya's mouth. And, you know, just like she needed to be censored for saying that. And I'm like, girl, Dr. Simone, you're just doing too much. Because when you're drunk and you're in a mood, you don't know what. He could be down there licking you and feeling good. And he come back up with your juices on his mouth. You kissing and you carrying on. So you pretty much probably already don't taste your juices if he goes down like that. Hell, I know I had. Uh, with my ex-husband, all right? It just is what it is. And it was okay. It didn't stink or anything. It just slimy, <laughs> okay? I know y'all didn't want that too much information. I know, but I just had to throw that in there. But um, that was pretty much it. Uh, like I said, Dr. Hepp was just throwing shade, period, at every, everybody and anybody that she wanted to give it to. But we moved to Mariah, and she's the last person. Uh, she's out uh, celebrating uh, Ramadan. You know, it's a Muslim holiday custom. And she's with her uh, husband and her family. And then she invites her mother and some more close-knitted family members and stuff. Or business associates or just uh, friends, I guess, that's been in her life. that she considered to be solid, good, upstanding people. And, of course, a few of them were trying to throw shade at Claude, calling her a hoe and just that and the third. And, you know, Mariah was there driving a the bus, you know, Kiki and laughing and carrying on and saying, you know, I don't, I don't care. I didn't want to get invited to her party, but it is what it is. But I hope, you know, and it's like she was alluding to she hoping Toya didn't go uh, and celebrate because that would be like a major uh, breach of trust and stuff of that nature. And, of course, her mama, Lucy, was sitting there saying, yeah, you know, you got to watch them and this, that. And if I like, Lucy, honey, just, you know, don't say nothing. Be nice. Just eat your food. Agree by shaking your head and let it be done because Mariah is going to come back into that circle and say the phone like she's always had, like all the women have. Um, merit the medicine. Only Toya really pretty much get them all told and put them in their place, but they don't accept her anyway. 
<laughs> but y'all, that's all I had for this particular review of the Merit the Medicine ladies, the crew over there. Um, again, it was titled Food for Thought. It was for season seven, episode eight, honey. They were, I mean, my Academy or VB, not Academy Award, but my V VMP, no, I'm sorry, most valuable player, my MVP. Uh, kind of twisted, ton twisted there. Will probably be Jackie because she's a great manipulator. She knows what she wants, she gets it, and she makes you feel bad. <laughs> Especially if you don't want to give it to you, because that that number she did on Curtis, I was like, damn, she know she could try to bring you the tears and give her the world if you want to. That that's one good manipulator right there, honey. She knew how to play them them uh, cards. But she had a chance to get what she wanted, and that was okay, even though it's uh, materialistic, and it's going to outlive her. <laughs> but it just is what it is when it came to that subject. But that's all I have for this video. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all felt about them. Don't forget to, uh, this is a new polling week with me putting questionnaire questions over there on my community feed. Um, site on my um, YouTube station. Go in there, take the polls, tell me how you feel. Remember, speak your mind because it's always a joy to hear what you all have to say or what I put out there just to have an interaction, a dialogue between us. Okay, it's a family affair. Get into it. But um, yes, y'all enjoy this video. Share this video, like this video, continue to subscribe, continue to tell others about me, and let's blow up together. All right, peace and blessings, and I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.